Do you know, I just realized, in all the excitement with the USS Texas and World of Warships and Tiger Day and the new Tier 10 tanks coming into Armored Warfare, I haven't done a World of Tanks video this week. Don't worry, we can fix that. Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, and uh, I have some amusing games for you today. This is Lego's Craft in the T-34 in a Tier 9 match on Live Oaks. It's not going particularly well for his team, the scores are 4-7, now they're 4-8. And the score's going to get worse before the team actually starts fighting back. I've got a shot at the turret of this only. He's put a couple of hits into this guy. However, there we go, they've just lost another tank, scores are 4-9. And it's around about now, now that all the wheat have been separated from the chaff on the team, that the team starts digging in, they've just claimed a kill and starts making an impression on this enemy team. Still looking for the shot at the O'Ni, but that Lorraine 40 t is looking like an inviting target. And his platoon mate in the Patton Korea, actually he's got this situation in hand. Scores are now 6-9. Closing in on the O'Ni. Object 704 coming over. You'd think, given what just happened in the town up to the north, that the artillery would actually start getting their arse into gear because they're going to die. And it looks like they have actually realised that that is not a very healthy place to be and they're beginning to head south. A44. Setting up fire. Nice. Scores are 9 11. They've just lost another tank, but they've managed to kill another one. Suddenly, this is actually starting to look quite winnable. Finishes off the Oni, Object 704, starts thinking about pushing for the enemy base. And, uh, well, Lego's craft thinks about it for a moment. Enemy artillery takes a shot at him, and then decides, actually, no, we need to stick together. And so he turns around and he starts heading back to where his team's artillery have retreated. They still have an E-75 on the enemy team. He was last seen in the town up to the northwest. Nobody's really sure how much health he has remaining. We also have a Yag Panther, a Walker Bulldog, the Artillery, and a Panther. But it's the Walker Bulldog that we're going to see first. Any second now, there he is, making a run for the Artillery. And he's caught the GW Tiger flat-footed, puts one shot into him. GW Tiger manages to make it into the low ground. He's relatively safe for now. It's always, of course, assuming that enemy artillery isn't trying to punch his ticket. He's making it as difficult as he possibly can for them, the Lorraine back there. And the Object 704 has realised that running off alone is suicidal. His best chance is to come back over here with the T-34 and the two artillery and support the surviving members of his team. So, they're almost all in position, dug in, ready to make their last stand. And that's when the M41 Walker Bulldog catches the Object 704 flat-footed. Scores a hit. Object frantically trying to turn himself around. Bulldog so focused on getting around this object, paying no attention whatsoever to the T-34 and the GW Tiger, who shotguns him after the T-34 puts a shot in and then starts manoeuvring to avoid enemy artillery fire. But there's a Panther has spotted him. So he falls back into the low ground again. Lego's craft in the T-34 pops up, puts a shot into the Panther. Where's the E-75? Oh well, let's not worry about the tanks that we can't see. Let's worry about the tanks that we can. The Panther, of course, also spotting for the enemy artillery, who has just fired. So we've probably got 10-15 seconds. Oh, a big old hit there from the object. Panther turns around, wants to finish him off. Come on, Lego's craft. Fantastic. And for a second, they're actually ahead on kills until the enemy artillery finishes off the object 704 and the Yag Panther appears on the far side of the railway bridge. But the schools are even, this is one hell of a comeback, and Lego's Crafts T-34 is in a fantastic position to deal with something like a Yag Panther, if he can get himself into a hold-down position and use this incredibly tough gun mantlet, as well as these dead tanks. This is actually a really, really strong position, and they could easily win this. There's the Yag Panther, hasn't seen him. Good shot. Oh, E-75 appeared, took a hit. Um, what was that? 
Yep, the GW Tiger has now thrown the game by doing as much damage to his own team as, so far, he's done to the enemy team. Well, never mind. Better luck next time. Next up, also in the T-34, we have Henke. He's in a Tier 10 match on Pro Karovka, and he's doing reasonably well, considering he's in a Tier 8 heavy. There's his first actual kill of the game. The match did feature a little bit of surreality earlier on, um, when the T-22 medium on the enemy team got himself reported for being in a T-22 medium. <laughs> because, you know, reasons. Anyway, Henke's advancing across the field, and he can't shake the nagging feeling that he's not alone over here. And suddenly, a wild T-54 appears. He bounces the first shot with his tracks, gets a shot off, but the T-54 has too much health, and you know how slowly the turret turns on the T-34, there is absolutely no way he's going to survive this. Unless the T-54 does something remarkably stupid. <laughs> oh well. At least he saw the funny side. Speaking of the funny side, wait until you see this next battle on Fisherman's Bay. This one was sent in by... I swear people come up with these names just to laugh watching me trying to pronounce them in World of Tanks videos. We're going to call him Dave, because, you know, that's what I do. This is Dave in the M41 Walker Bulldog Grand Finals Edition. But it's not really about him. This is more about, well, what happens at the end of the match. As you can see, Dave's team are absolutely slaughtering the enemy. There's a platoon of bat chats here who, who, they're just running amok and killing everything that they see. Now, Dave took some splash damage uh, from the enemy Conqueror Orbital Laser Cannon, which managed to land a shot uh, roughly in the same postcode as him. So, he's looking for a spot of revenge, and he's almost going to get it. First, though, he's going to try to ninja the kill on this E4. Can he do it? Yes, he can. And that's when he spots the Conqueror, goes for it, and gets himself rebalanced by a Jaegeru. But it's not really about Dave in this replay. It's about what happens after he dies. To begin with, let's just have some fun watching the Bat Chat. These guys were having a little bit too much fun. Watch this poor old Jaegeru as he comes around the corner. He's trying to get the shot at the first Bat Chat. He's pulled back as he reloads. And then this one arrives and... Yeah, Meanwhile, the third batch out in the platoon is about to find himself lunch in the shape of a T-57 Heavy. He's going to get very, very upset and salty about it, but watch the Yeagerou behind him. There it goes. Shot into the rear, sets him on fire. Automatic fire extinguisher kicks in, 20,000 credits expended, and there's the ammo rack. <laughs> Three tanks left on the enemy team. Where are they? Oh, here they are. Two artillery and an enemy M41, skulking in the corner of the map like the craven dogs that they are. <laughs> Although very shortly it's going to be one artillery and an M41, as the T110 there finishes off the uh, valiant attempt at staving off the inevitable by the uh, GW Tiger there. Oh, there it is in chat. There it is. There's the salty T-57 heavy demanding that everybody report the batch out for using illegal mods. I mean, <laughs> what? What illegal mods? Uh, our tank's not supposed to fire that quickly. Don't you know what autoloaders are? <laughs> You're driving one. What's going on? Well, anyway, this is where things start to take a turn for the ridiculous. Just take a look at the scores before this goes any further. There are still ten tanks left alive on Dave's team. See if you can guess how many are going to be left alive by the end of this patch. Here we go. Yeah, don't worry, it ain't going to take long before we have the first casualty of war. And there it is, the M53 shotguns the T110. Five. Who's next? Looks like the T54E1 fancies his chances. Oh, there we go, he's got the artillery. So, just the M41 Walker Bulldog Grand Finals Edition left. And he's got a T54E1 staring at him. He just seems to be having a little bit of a gun depression problem. <laughs> And, uh, oh, oh, hold on, Batchat's going around to get him, Batchat's going around to get him. Oh, no, you're not. Ah. <laughs> so there's, there's two. Um, T-54, getting a push. Doesn't really seem to be helping him much, though. Uh, he's like, stop pushing at the back. I can't get my bloody gun turret around. And this little bugger won't stop shooting at me. 
Stop it, you. The bulldog is just shooting him in the tracks. Over and over and over and over. And some of the shots are going through. And some of them aren't. But the Grand Finals edition of the Walker Bulldog is not an autoloader. So the T54E1 is never going to get his tracks back up. There's no big delay as the Bulldog reloads that magazine. Because it doesn't have a magazine. So he can just keep shooting over and over into his tracks. Oh, he's got the gun depression. Oh, this is not looking good. Oh, he managed to bounce. <laughs> Twice. How do you bounce off an M41 Walker Bulldog with the T-54E1's gun? Well, somehow he managed it, not once but twice, which means he is now reloading. And, well, he's dead. So, three down. <laughs> Seven to go. The one thing that you'll notice is that all of these tanks clustering around the corner trying to kill this bulldog have in common is that they all have pretty diabolically bad gun depression, which means that this is probably not the smartest move that any of them have ever made. That bulldog's having the time of his life. And the bat chat is he's pinned in there by his own teammates. He can't get out. There's absolutely nothing he can do other than sit there waiting for the inevitable. But maybe, just maybe, while that bulldog is kicking the bat chat to death, he won't notice the T-10 over there, who suddenly decides to enlist in the Soviet Navy. Sure, the bat chat drowned himself trying exactly the same thing, but a T-10's faster than a bat chat, isn't it? Four down, six to go. And five down five to go. Does that Jaeger who really think he's going to succeed where these guys have failed? Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> In fact, I think it's probably safe to say that the only reason this Jaeger who here doesn't also become a victim to the M41 Bulldog is that somebody saw sense and started capping. The M41 Bulldog would like to thank Dave's team, without whom that score just wouldn't have been possible. Well, we're going to finish off today's video with a TOG platoon, because it's been ages since I did a TOG video, and TOGs are epic. Well, they're not. They're terrible. But they're fun, and fun will do. Well, actually, this TOG platoon is epic. See if you can guess, right now, how many kills these two guys are going to get between them. This is Karg and Kiroko, and they both drive TOGs, so they're fine, upstanding gentlemen, in my opinion. Luckily for them, this Siegfried line map is in assault mode and they're on the defending team. Can you even begin to imagine just how painful this would have been to watch if they'd been attacking? <laughs> on the Siegfried line. Starting in the middle of that field and then having a clock. Oh no. But it's not that kind of replay. Although, well, if you see the way their team plays in this match, um, if the roles had been reversed and they had been on the attacking team here, it's entirely possible that they would have finally made it into the town the last two tanks left alive on their team against 13 or 14 enemies. Having said that, well, the results may not have been different. Watch the way these two guys play their TOGs. So, the TOG 2. With a top speed of 14 kilometers per hour, that's 14, not 40, a 1 with a 4 after it. It's only 1 kilometer per hour faster than the T95, the Doom Turtle, the slowest machine in World of Tanks. But while the Doom Turtle is slow, it's got a metric ass ton of armour, and it's got a hoofing dirty great big gun. The TOG 2, by comparison, well, nobody ever accused the TOG 2 of having too much armour. Despite being a heavy tank, it only has 76mm of armour at the most. And really, who can't penetrate 76mm of armour at tier 6? Well, you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> You'd be very, very surprised, apparently. Wait until you see this. The 17-pounder gun, by the way, is very, very good. Uh, it's the gun that was fitted to the Firefly. A very, very good anti-tank gun. Good penetration, good accuracy, good aiming time. The damage, not great, but the rate of fire is very good, and it soon adds up. As that OI down there is about to find out. The OI, of course, is the Tog's nemesis. Oh, dear. Bounced off the side armor. Uh, <laughs> look, at, look at that extreme angling. Nope, not gonna penetrate. Oh, a Churchill. Bounces as well. Remember, the Tog only has 76 millimeters of armor. 
and the OI's 150mm howitzer, even its high explosive ammunition, has 75mm of penetration. So you cannot afford to let him shoot at the big, flat, slab-sided side of the TOG-2. And that's exactly what Carl here is not doing. He, look at the extreme angle that he's presenting towards this OI. And of course, this is the holy grail for OI drivers, getting the finer howitzer at TOGs. Because the high explosive shell can do 910 average damage. And he's so desperate to put a shot. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, and now you're tracked. And, of course, the reload on that thing, and now you're tracked again. You can get four, maybe five shots off from this 17-pounder gun for every one shot fired by the OR's howitzer. Where do you think you're going, Sunshine? Have some of this. Oh, Sherman missed. Oh, and he's taken a hit. The TOG is wounded. The TOG has suffered injury at the hands of the Churchill. But he's only going to get to do it once because now he's had his tracks blown off. And he just keeps bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And oh, hello. It's a flat panzer. Who's he going to go for? Well, somebody else is shooting up the Churchill. So he's going for the flat panzer. And he's bouncing off the side of the TOG as well because side scraping at this kind of angle, it might only be... 76 millimeters of armor plate, but you're never going to penetrate anything at that kind of angle. I mean, the side of the TOG is roughly the same dimensions as the Great Wall of China, right? But So you're going to hit it. You couldn't miss if you tried, but you're not penetrating anything at that angle. Bye-bye, Flat Panzer. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's only three of them left. And the TOG's worst nightmare... Well, it would have been his worst nightmare if the ELC had actually managed to park up on his big fat ass. But he didn't, and he's dead. Oh, here comes a KV-85, and the dog can't run away, so he has to stand and fight. And he can't really side-scrape here, although he's trying, because he doesn't have the building to protect himself to shield the bulk of the machine behind. But he can angle against one of them, and he's angling against that Churchill, while he kills the KV-85. Come on, there we go. And even if you can't angle against everything that's shooting at you, You've got 1,400 health in the TOG. So you can afford to take a hit or two. Although the odds are definitely stacked against him now. And there's only the two TOGs left. Can Carl get his top gun before he goes down? He can, and he's done. And now it's all down to Kuroko in the only surviving TOG on the team. So, Kiroko, no pressure. You're just the last tank left on your team. There are five enemy tanks left to kill. If you want to win this match, you're going to have to drag a Radley Walters medal out of your arse. Easy! <laughs> Who's he going to go for first? And I'm pretty sure it's the Churchill around this corner. Yep, there he is. Now, I will say this much for the Churchill driver. After that fiasco against the other TOG earlier on, he has suddenly gained a newfound respect for side-scraping TOGs, and he ain't coming around that corner. However, what's this? How do you miss? <laughs> A TOG 2's ass comes sliding around the corner. You miss your first shot, you bounce the second and third ones. Oh my god. Alright, Churchill's down. SU-85, congratulations, you've found the TOG. <laughs> that lot of good it did you. VK, you're dead too. Two enemy tanks left. You cannot kill the TOG. <laughs> All you're going to do is piss him off. Or well, then again, KV-85 and he does have a lot of... Whoa, 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 wait. Did he just... What's he doing? What? Don't aim at the... <laughs> He's aiming at his upper hull. He's trying to shoot into the top deck. But not... What? Just shoot the turret, you gimp. It only has 76 millimeters of... Oh, my God. Oh, well. Just one left. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we know where he is, given that the cap warning is going off. And it's the Stug. But he beholds the magnificence that is Her Majesty's Royal Navy's finest armoured landship, and instead of standing and fighting, he fills his little pink panties <laughs> and tries to run away instead. Fat lot of good. It will do him. 14 kills between the two of them. There's a, one of the easiest crucial contributions I have ever seen. And how is it possible? Because Tog is best tank. Kalg got himself, even though he died, ace tanker, crucial contribution, top gun, and high caliber. Kuroko. <laughs> Look at this.
He got, as well as Ace Tanker, Fire for Effect, Crucial Contribution, Radley Walters Medal, Bruiser, Duelist, Hand of God, Top Gun, Defender, Steel Wall, and the Karl Banoffs Medal. Who wants to know how much damage Karl blocked with the TOG's severely unimpressive 76mm of armour? 76mm of armour, by the way, is the same as the Sherman, and that's a tier 5 medium, right? You ready for this? You ready? Drum roll. Two and a half thousand damage blocked by a tank that has 76 millimeters of armor. How is this possible? Simple. Tog is best tank. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have yourselves a good weekend, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.